Hey YouTube! It is Faye, and for today's video, I'm going to be doing a, another Q&A with Faye. This is number two, and this question is from one, actually all, of my students um, in my beginner's automotive classes. So this question is, Faye, what tool should I buy to start working on my car? So uh, in my beginner's class, I have all sorts of skill levels of women from women who have actually like done some stuff on their cars already, like maybe brakes or an oil change, to women who have literally never popped their hoods before. Um, so a lot of these people have, have never um, actually even owned any tools. So that is the demographic that I am psh, aiming for in this video. So if you're like looking through, like you watch all of it and you're like, oh my God, Faye, you like missed so much stuff. Okay, well in my, um, in my Underhood Basics class, we identify all the engine accessories, we identify all of our fluids and where our filters are, we check, we remove, and we inspect our engine air filter, we inspect our drive belts, we remove light bulbs and check them and put them back, we test our batteries and our alternators, and uh, replace wiper blades and you know, all sorts of things, top off our fluids. Um, so with that sort of class in mind, um, I'm going to show you some tools that I recommend for that. Um, also, I'm going to show you some tools I recommend for changing a spare tire and then also for the most popular jobs that I am hired to teach and show individual people after they've been a student of mine. And that is, of course, changing engine oil and changing drive belts um, and Bug. Ah. Um, yeah, okay, <laughs> let's go for it. Okay, first and most importantly is a way to see what we're working on. Many of you have seen me with this flashlight, my favorite flashlight on earth, but you don't need anything crazy like this. I mean, I like this one because it's rechargeable, it lasts forever, and it is so bright, it is so bright. Sometimes it's actually too bright, but this is really expensive. You don't need anything crazy like that. This is the first flashlight I ever bought. I got this at Sears, and I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks, like, a decade ago, and it still works, um, so it was a good investment. It's not as bright as this one, um, but it's still really nice. Now, here is another equivalent, um, once again, in the $40 price range. I found this on the side of the road, but you can get it on Amazon. So, number one, flashlight. Number two, <laughs> gloves. Um, a, a box of rubber gloves. Um, for those of you who know me, I do not like to get dirty. I like to stay clean. Um, it's good for my skin. So I recommend definitely getting gloves and then also um, some shop rags. Now you can just like use any sort of, ra I mean, you can use paper towels from the kitchen, but like they disintegrate. They tend to like lint off really easily. Um, these are a little bit heavier, dutier, and uh, I like them because you can really like see the color of the fluid on there and it like it holds like fluid really well, oils and transmission fluid and stuff like that. So number two, a way to keep clean. Number three, a service manual. We can get with just these three things already, y'all, we can get into like so much trouble. Um, definitely get a service manual for your vehicle. It'll save us so many headaches, trust me. Um, so this one I got on Amazon. This is a lot different than um, your owner's manual or your user's manual that you may find in your glove box that comes with your vehicle. This is something that you buy specific to your um your vehicle and it's going to have a lot of, uh, wow, check that out. I love the Bentley manuals. They are just so great. Um, oh, here's, here's doing some brakes. That's fantastic. Um, it's going to have step-by-step -step instructions on actually performing repairs. And this is such an important tool to have. Um, you, you know, the book may not be this thick or this nice or this crazy. You may find like a Haynes manual, um, you know, is, is just fine. Um, or, I mean, maybe, hey, you can find a crazy factory repair manual that's that's this good. Oh my gosh, I just love this book. This book is awesome. Um, you can spend hours <laughs> learning about your car. Number four is a multimeter. Those of you who take my class, you always see me using this one. I love this little multimeter. It just does everything that I need. However, 
you don't need this to start out with. I don't even remember how much I paid for that, but it wasn't cheap. Here's what I use in my Electrical 101 class and um, in Underhood Basics when we test our battery and our alternator. This is a Harbor Freight one, and it was like $5.99. Or if you have a coupon, it's free with purchase of gloves and a towel. So, uh, or, or, you know, gloves and, uh, or, and, or rags. One item, and you get this for free if you've got the coupon. So those are by far my top four. Now let's move on to number five, which is a torque wrench. Now this is nothing fancy at all. I think this was maybe like $30 at Harbor Freight, but I, I, I love this and I think it's so important for those of us who are just starting out. Um, the number one thing I see people do wrong um, when they are new to mechanicking is over tightening and also under tightening bolts. So especially when paired with our factory repair manual, one of these is just like so helpful because it gives us an idea of how tight that uh, that drain plug should be, how tight our lug nuts should be. And uh, really I recommend that all beginners start out by using one of these religiously just so that they can start to develop that muscle memory and get a feel for how tight bolts and stuff should actually be. Next is a breaker bar. Here is uh, one I've had for a long time, and it was obscenely expensive. And here's one from Harbor Freight, and I think it was maybe $25. I don't know. Could be less. Do y'all see a difference? <laughs> uh, neither do I. Um, no, that's not true. I actually, I actually love my Snap-on one. Um, but just, you know, for you starting out, just get, just get a, a basic one. A, a basic cheap one is totally fine. Um, I actually recommend that everyone have one of these in their vehicle instead of that stupid, like, uh, you know, lug wrench that comes with your vehicle. I, I don't know. This one I just is so much easier for me to loosen lug nuts because I'm small. Uh, and also because like a lot of places, a lot of tire and wheel shops don't necessarily hand torque their lug nuts with their torque wrench. They'll end up over tightening them. And then when you're stuck on the side of the road, it is just impossible to get your lug nuts off. So I totally recommend a breaker bar. Um, this is a half inch um, breaker bar. And uh, then of course we will get the associated socket set for the um, half inch size. And really, you know, for, for half inch size um, for a socket set, um, I, I, I like to get um, a full set up to like a 24 millimeter. We'll see a lot of um, drain plugs um, on like a, transmission and uh, differentials and I you know we love doing those services they're fun easy and great um, great basic beginner work and they're gonna be a 24 millimeter a lot of them are gonna have 24 millimeter drain plugs so um, but but really I mean you don't for for a half inch um, and if, if you're on a budget you know the most important thing probably is like a 17 millimeter up to a 24 millimeter or so. However, if we're able to get a 10 millimeter all the way up to a 24 millimeter socket um, in the half inch size. And since we're on the topic of ratchets, the next thing that I recommend is a really nice three ace inch drive. That's this size as compared to the half inch drive. See, that one's, that one's littler. Um, ratchet and associated sockets. Now, uh, I mean, I, I said really nice. It doesn't have to be really nice. This one is my favorite one in the entire world, and you can tell it's actually got kind of a long handle because I'm not the strongest mechanic in the world, but I started out with this guy. This is my first ratchet. It's just like, I think it's just a little craftsman. Yeah, um, and it actually ends right about there, um, and this is just a pipe that uh, I'll, I'll take on and off. So, you know, instead of going out and getting a bunch of different um, ratchets at first, I, I, I just got this one and then I just, you know, found that pipe somewhere and uh, I've just made it long. I make it longer when I need to have it longer and then it's got a shorter handle when I need to make it shorter and that's, you know, that works pretty well for me. Um, and then associated uh, sockets. So um, here is a shallow socket. Here is a deep socket. And here is a semi deep socket. Now, if you want to go the route of just purchasing individual, like, socket sets that's totally cool they come in groups kind of like this it's actually this is an example of a harbor freight they come actually on a on a plastic um i don't know just they come on this piece of plastic that you know you break them off of there and then i just put them on this little rail to keep them all organized 
um, or you can buy them like this. These are snap-on and they've kind of come in this cool little magnetic tray. Um, however, what I think is actually the easiest and best way to start is just by getting all of, all of this stuff in a full set, like one of those plastic totes. And you can get those in both SAE uh, or metric, um, or you can get them in SAE and metric, you know, a, a, a kit that has uh, both. Um, when I first started out, I only got metric because the only car that I was working on was my Volkswagen, and then my Toyota, it, then my Suzuki Samurai, and they, they all just needed metric stuff. It wasn't actually um, until I, I got my first uh, my first job where I had to work on everything, Atomic Auto, that I started having to buy some uh, standard or SAE uh, tools. So unless you have, you know, an American made car your, or your vehicle, um, you know, takes, takes SAE, you know, you can, you can just get away with using only metric tools for a while. I mean, depending on what you drive. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think the first and the first socket set that I bought after I got that kit was the, the, the semi deeps. They're just sort of, sort of like a nice happy medium, um, in between, uh, you know, obviously in between the, the deep and the shallow. But yeah, I would totally just start out if you don't want to go through the process of just like trying to find, you know, this and then, you know, and just just get a basic kit like this. And in terms of what sizes to get, most of the kits are going to start out with the smallest being an eight millimeter. And they're going to go up to, I think this one goes up to a 19, but most of them are going to go from an eight to a 19. Yep. Um, this one, the Harbor Freight set goes from a 10 to a 19. Um, you know, that's, that's totally fine. You may also want to get a couple extras though. I like to have my, um, I like to go all the way down to a, um, a seven, uh, and I like to go all the way up to a 24. Um, but you know, this, this basic set is, um, is totally fine for starting out. Of course, there are two other sockets you'll need to get to complete your socket collection. Um, and this is another really uh, common job that I'm I'm hired to teach automotive newbies, uh, and we replace our spark plugs. These are spark plug sockets. Five Ace by far is the one that I use it's most most common size, at least from my experience and the jobs that I do. 13, 16 is the second most common. Then there are a few other obscure ones. So if you think you might have an obscure car, I don't know. I think Toyota's now got some crazy. Um, I, I don't know. I, I own the socket and I can't remember what it is, but there's some, there's some obscure ones, but, um, by far, uh, five eighths is the most common. Also, if the kit that you bought, if your socket kit, um, say you, you know, you bought the pack, it's going to come with, hopefully it should come with some extensions. Now, if it doesn't come with extensions, then here are some examples of different lengths of extensions. You can, um, you can get the, I think these top two are just cheap Harbor Freight ones. Yeah, totally. These are both cheap Harbor Freight ones, um, and these are more expensive ones. But I mean, do you do you see a huge difference? They all look kind of the same. Uh, so, and and all all of these, any any brand, whatever ones you buy, are, I mean, I'm sure will be totally totally fine for you. But I like to get um, these three. You know, just a a, a shorter one. Uh, what is this? Like three or four inches? This looks like a three incher, um, a five incher, and I, I don't even know. But you get the idea. So <laughs> short, short, medium, and long. Just a variety of extensions is great. The next thing I would definitely recommend is getting your <laughs> it's your spider web base. A shop chicken. There really is nothing better for entertainment value and um, just general comfort if you're having a get that off your face um if you're having like you know a rough time and you need some encouragement or some laughter or if you have bugs in your shop that you need to be eaten um i highly recommend one of these you can find them at your local feed shop for like ten dollars or less you know it's a doozy Okay, no, in all seriousness, uh, the next thing is a, um, a set of wrenches. You can just buy them like this. Um, this is an example of some SAE um, wrenches, and this is just a, a cheap set from Harbor Freight, and it comes with a nice little holder. And this is totally, this is totally fine. You can also buy a whole um, kit of them. Once again, here um, is 
some examples. There are some ones that are just loose. I lost my holder for them or this somewhere. Um, just again, cheap Harbor Freight. Um, there's some craftsman ones. If you're going to be getting um, a set of wrenches, I totally recommend starting at a size 7. This is for our little brake bleeders, um, our little valves on the back of our calipers, and uh, going up to a 19 um, at least for um, metric and uh, SAE. Eh, that's fine. Just get like your, your, your basic kit. Okay, and next is a basic screwdriver set. Now, there's nothing basic about this screwdriver set. I'm just showing y'all a bunch of different brands because, I don't know, I don't have brand loyalty. These all work equally good for me. Um, but what's most important in a screwdriver set is that you have both a Phillips and a flathead of size number one, which is a little, little guy, um, and number two. These are the most common. You see, it's a little, bit, a little bit bigger. And actually comparing, you can see the difference between number one and number two. Uh, we use these a lot for air filters, removing those little plastic clips, and so much more. Uh, but it's, it's important to have um, number one and number two of Phillips and Flathead. I also love having some larger um, Flathead screwdrivers. These are so great for doubling as like li little mini pry bars, opening paint cans, I mean you name it. And then some stubbies. So make sure you've got all these things in your set. But I'm actually going to take it a step further. I don't think that this, that this, um, you know, the snap-on set covers everything. And I, I would not recommend that you starting out buying this one. I'm just using this for an example. Um, but I also love having, this is just a, this is a little craftsman, a little pocket screwdriver. These are like the handiest tools in the world. Um, here's another example of just awesome pocket screwdrivers. Oh, there's some product placement there. Um, little pocket screwdrivers. I got the magnetic base. There's nothing better than them. And then also some of our air filters we've seen in class before, um, we need little Torx bits to get to them. This is a cheap uh, T20. Yeah, this one I got from, I think this is, yeah, yeah. Here's a Harbor Freight. Look, we're representing everything. Actually, we're going even further representing different brands. This is a Saab brand. <laughs> <laughs> Torx. And actually this one is, this is so cool. A Saab factory tool. I love this one so much, but it, this actually comes out and it's got two different sizes. The most common ones that are used on Saab. That's pretty sweet. Not that Saab exists anymore, but it does in my mind. Um, so that's, uh, that's a pretty good, and, and you know, you might not just want um, you know, only the, the T20. Um, in fact, if you've got a, a Volkswagen, I guess you're going to want more of the T27, um, also T25. But I, you know, you just, you can just get a, a full set of these, um, unless of course you're cool and you have a Saab and it just comes with the, um, the only Torx you'll ever need. That's not true. I still have to use other ones, but there we go. Uh, okay. So that is your basic screwdriver set. Next, hammers. I use these two hammers the most out of all of my hammers. Um, this is a soft hammer, so I can whack things and I'm not going to damage them. And then this, um, I use this like when I want to damage something <laughs> or break something loose. Uh, but yeah, I use these two more than anything else. Both of these were under $10. Actually, they're probably under $10 together. Next is a magnetic tray, just for storing bolts and little clips and little things, and actually even for sticking little tools too that you don't want to fall off the side of your vehicle when you're trying to stick all your bolts in like the rain tray or like in the gutters or like just somewhere. Let's just put them just, you know, this is so, it's so important. It's like $2.99 at Harbor Freight or free if you have a coupon. Okay, next we're moving on to our oil change stuff. Um, first, you're going to need a set of oil filter pliers. Um, actually, these are these are great. These are actually the first ones I ever bought, and they're the first one. They're the only ones I needed for a while. And then I found this little piece of magic, um, which just acts as it fits onto the end of your three ace ratchet. I think I got this at Sears. Yeah, totally, Crossman. Um, and that will actually grab the oil filter and help you spit it off, which is just so it's. That is, it's just so cool. Uh, I use actually both of these equally. So it just sort of depends on what style you think you'd prefer or get them both. Some of these, uh, some vehicles, it's just impossible to use these to get to the oil filter. Some you totally need these and, uh, you know, vice versa. 
So oil filter pliers. Um, then, of course, you need a drain pan and um, funnel. Here is a funnel that I use. This is my favorite my favorite funnel, little yellow. Uh, this is actually a coolant funnel. See, press down. Um, but I use it for oil. I use this one like nine times out of ten. I use this little guy. Um, I, I like how it has a wide opening, so it's it's gonna fit really snugly um, in most uh, you know where you, most oil fill uh, whatever you call them underneath the oil cap sort of area. Just bang. Um, and it's yeah, so it's n nice and wide for the oil to flow in as well. Um, this is another great funnel, but this one I don't use for engine oil. Um, this one is a transmission uh, funnel, and you really need that nice little tip there to fit into um, on a lot of transmissions. We're going to be actually w for doing a basic drain and fill just for fun um, and, and for maintenance, of course. Um, we're going to be filling just from the transmission dipstick tube, and so you need um, that sort of little pointy. And it also needs to be pretty tall um, just, so that we, just to make pouring easier. Uh, I love this uh, drain pan. Yeah, it's dirty. I just used it yesterday. Whoops. But I love this one so much because it's got this this um, this spout. It just makes cleanup really easy. Um, for those of us who don't work at a shop, we have to put our used oil in containers and bring it to our local oil change place or AutoZone or Napa or wherever takes it. So having this, oh my god, just get one with this thing, y'all. Little spout, little uh, pour spout makes life so much easier. So there we go, some oil change stuff. And for those of you who do not have lifted vehicles, um, actually, and for all of us, we should totally have these things. Um, a nice set of jack stands. These I think I just got at Napa, nothing fancy. Um, I just want to make sure that they are rated, in fact, for the weight of the vehicle that you're going to be lifting. So 6,000 pounds is more than good enough for my little rabbit. Next is definitely a good floor jack. I got this like 10 years ago at Harbor Freight. It was under 100 bucks, of course. I probably had a coupon. Um, and once again, just make sure that the weight rating is going to be similar to what you're going to be lifting. Um, this is absolutely a must-have if you're going to be doing a lot of work underneath your vehicle. Do not use the little jack that comes with your car for changing a spare if you're going to be doing oil changes or, I mean, anything actually underneath the car. Last but not least, a nice set of pliers and clippers. Now, um, this is my favorite set that I use all the time. And here's the equivalent set from Harbor Freight. Um, totally, totally fine. I mean, if you, like any of these, if you use really expensive tools and then, you know, you use tools from, you know, cheaper tools, you definitely feel a difference. But for starting out, there is nothing wrong with these. Um, and then, of course, some nice channel locks are awesome for, um, Mostly we use these to remove like hose clamps and stuff. Um, and then, you know, if you only had to choose like two of all of these items, I'd say probably the channel locks and the, the little snips um, we use mostly for um, zip ties, <laughs> cutting zip ties. Because, well, probably when you're new at stuff, I mean, I break things all the time and I'm not new at stuff. So you're probably going to break things too. And you're going to need to use some um, wire to repair things or probably a lot of zip ties. Um, so super important to have these. Also, these are really helpful with um, not not cutting them off, but for removing those little plastic, um, I don't know what you call those, those plastic retaining clips uh, that hold on trim pieces and stuff like that. Sometimes we need to remove those to get to batteries or air filters. Um, and that actually can be a, a, a really great technique for removing them with um, with just these if you don't have, of course, two small pocket screwdrivers. But yeah, last but not least, I think it's really important to have um, a, a nice set. I mean, I love a good needle nose um, in combination with like some regular pliers. But honestly, like like I said before, probably just the, the channel locks and the snips are most important if you're on a budget. So yeah. 
Okay, so um, I hope that you like this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Those are the most important tools I think that someone needs to have if they're just starting out working on their own car. Um, clearly, if you have suggestions for me or if there's something that you just could not live without when you were starting out, definitely leave me a comment below so I can read it and then share that information with others. But yeah, I hope you liked this video and I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Okay, surprise. <laughs> I thought this video was over too, but then I made the brilliant decision to ask all of my followers on Instagram um, what they would suggest just in case I had missed anything and I actually got some great responses. I got so many good responses that I was like, I've got to just film a little more. So I'm going to read through a few of these and make sure that I touched base on everyone's awesome suggestions. So first of all, I got a ton of recommendations <laughs> for um, extra 10 millimeter sockets. Now, um, a lot of you experienced mechanics are probably going to start laughing right now, but yeah, 10 millimeter sockets have like this weird thing where they seem to like disappear. So I know I have like a, a, at least a dozen 10 millimeter sockets. I buy them when I lose them and then I refine them and they're all over the place. Yeah. So extra 10 millimeter sockets in the three eighths inch drive, most likely. Also quarter inch drive is recommended, but notice I didn't really add any like quarter inch drive um, ratchets or sockets like, you know, in, in that beginner's kit. I mostly just stuck with the three ace drive ratchet and sockets and then for like heavier duty or stuff like the lug nuts and, you know, and whatever, uh, the 17 through 24 millimeter stuff, the bigger stuff, um, I recommended that in half inch drive and I had a lot of people sort of back me up on that one as well. Another thing that I totally forgot about, but that's brilliant. I mean, I kind of covered it with a pocket screwdriver, but a magnet stick, um, a lot of people recommended that it would, that it's really good, especially, especially for, for newbies. Um, you know, it takes us a second to, to be able to, I don't know, like train our fingers to not drop stuff. I still drop stuff and lose stuff all the time. So I totally, this is something I have with me all the time. And that is a magnet stick. That is like a telescoping. You can get, Telescoping? Telescoping? And, well, you can, you know, you can get stuff that is, that you drop pretty far. <laughs> I mean, obviously this only works on stuff that's magnetic, but um, that's most bolts. So this, this is useful. So thank you so much to several people who recommended that. Um, also, I was stoked. Um, let's see, where is it? Karen from Girls and Garages Magazine said that she actually wrote a whole article on this already, and I haven't seen it. I haven't checked it out yet, so I am going to check it out, and I will link it below just in case there's something that she had that I missed, or if this is like a little bit too extreme, maybe she's got a more basic version. I'm not sure, but I'll link it below just so we can get as many perspectives as possible because this obviously um, is a super hot topic, and a lot of people have a lot of great input and a lot of great opinions. Um, seems like everyone's top, like number one choice is, um, is a flashlight though. So good for me and good for all of you. Also, what was really great is that, uh, people recommended not only should I list great tools for beginners, but also important fluids for beginners. And the top three seems to be Loctite, um, especially if we're doing brake stuff. This is red Loctite. So this is like the strongest, the strongest, the strong. Um, and when we're doing, um, when we're doing brake stuff, we're going to probably more or less use the blue stuff, which isn't as strong. Some of the bolts also come, um, pre lock tighted if we're getting like a whole new hardware kit or like we're rebuilding a caliper or something like that. But I agree that Loctite is, is good. I mean, this isn't something we use a ton on the beginner stuff, but for, for brakes, quite often we see this being recommended. I definitely use this a lot in my intro to engine building class you know, for, for some stuff. Um, another fluid that was highly recommended was a brake parts cleaner. This is a oh, brake clean. Uh, so this is definitely for cleaning up stuff. We're going to spill on our shop floor. We're going to make a mess. Um, it just, it, it's going to happen. So brake clean. What a great recommendation. Thank you. Um, and then another fluid recommendation is like a liquid wrench sort of situation. 
actually my personal favorite is PB Blaster. <laughs> um, but this is just one that I happen to have right now. Um, there, there's there's a whole a whole bunch of great types of sort of like liquid wrench uh, out there. So for those of you who are not lucky enough to live in a place where ice and snow are not an issue and you've got salt all over the roads, um, did I say that wrong? It, so I don't I don't live in a place where there's snow and ice, so we don't salt the roads. So I really don't even, I mean, look at, I, I haven't used this in a long time. I don't really need this anymore. But um, when I first started out, I was actually in New England and this and like a blowtorch I used all the time. So if you're in New England, probably a torch should be, or, or I don't know, uh, Michigan or Wisconsin, I don't know, anywhere where like y'all are in the, I don't know, the snow and ice and lousy climate probably good for you to have this and a blowtorch. So thank you so much for that recommendation. I also had um, someone recommend that um, ratcheting wrenches are, are really great. Now at first I was like this is kind of overkill because they're kind of spendy, but um, a lot of people pointed out to me that they're, they've gotten a lot cheaper over the years. Um, let's see, this is uh, Diag All Day <laughs> says, um, that he highly recommends a set of metric reversible. Um, now this, these ones aren't reversible. I have some reversible ones. I just grabbed these because these were the cheapest ones that I bought. Actually, I, I got these on sale. Um, they're just obviously Craftsman brand, but um, the set was missing the 15. Who uses a 15? Well, I started working on sobs and I'm like, okay, well, some, some vehicles 15 is actually a thing, um, but not for me for a long time. So I ended up getting this set really, really cheap. But, uh, but I, I definitely actually agree with the reversible, um, you know, that's, that's where you can have, so this one, one way is, well, I don't know, <laughs> this, this way only loosens and then I have to switch it around to, to tighten. But if you get it stuck in a, in a horrible spot, you know, cause you're a, a newbie, we all been there and you accidentally take this off. Can you see I'm shiny? I'm very sweaty. It's very hot in Texas right now. But you're trying to get something off, you're not really paying attention, you're not focusing, and then next thing you know, your bolt is like all the way out and like, or, you know, as far out as it can go, it's back to get something, and you, you've got your bolt stuck, you've got your tool stuck, and you're like, oh no! <laughs> so yeah, reversible ones are actually a, a good way to go. So anyway, as Diag All Day was saying, they've come way down in price since when he first bought his first set, um, they were three times more expensive then, but they're so well worth it. And um, that, was, that was a recommendation for one of his first purchases, so thank you so much. Um, let's see, everyone seemed to recommend that the 3 ace inch drive ratchet not only have a long handle, which awesome, or, or a cheater bar or a breaker bar pipe of some sort that you can add on to the bottom, but then also that it's a flex head. So you saw one of mine, not the Craftsman one, but, but my Snap-on one was a flex head. And that is super helpful. I have a couple of videos where I use my um, the flex head three strive ratchet, and just having the opportunity to like, or having the ability to flex made it like made me able to get in like really small places. So that was really helpful. Um, also, another great suggestion from Lumberjack Chad um, for a true beginner, I'd suggest the three hundred piece Craftsman kit at Sears. They've got it on discount right now. Um, he goes on to say that the 400 piece might not be the best choice because it just adds a bunch of screwdriver bits which you may or may not need. Um, I've actually, gosh, I didn't know that, so we'll see if I can find that online and link it down below. But yeah, like I said um, earlier in the video, the Craftsman, like the plastic set, like beginner's mechanics tool set, that was what I started out with. So great suggestion. Um, also, knee pads. Yeah, I mean, for those of you who see me in class or for those of you who have had me um, as your mechanic. You see the first thing I do is I grab my flashlight and I grab my little knee pad. Uh, actually, it's, um, I use this one. It was made in Portland, Oregon. Actually, Gresham, Oregon, but whatever, Portland, uh, which is where I used to live. So um, it was local to me back then, but that thing I've had, um, I've had that for, gosh, about six years now, and I use it every day and it's still, uh, it hasn't like worn out. I mean, that was like 30 bucks. So you might, I mean, that might be something where at first you just sort of stack some uh, cardboard boxes, sort of, you know, you flatten them and you fold them over. And I used to do that for a while. Um, so let's see if there is anything else that I was missing. A lot of people recommended 
um, adjustable wrenches, but I'm actually not, not big on those. And actually, let's see, adjustable wrenches, um, do I even have one? Oh yeah, so something like this, but I don't know, I got this as like a hand-me-down from someone. I actually am not a huge fan of these at all because I, I, I think that people get in the habit of like only using these and you can actually cause damage rounding off a lot of bolts. I'm not huge on these, so I actually wouldn't recommend this, but uh, but a couple people did, so meh. Um, I'll let you make your own choice, but uh, I don't... If I see a mechanic using one of these, I'm always like, eh, eh, what you doing? Why didn't you just get the right wrench? Uh, so yeah, I mean, this, 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 I don't even know where I got that, but as hand me down from somebody or probably actually donation to my, uh, to my classes. So, um, oh no, there was something else that I wanted to add, um, from... Andy Kell 74 on Instagram. He had recommended a bunch of things that I uh, that were already I already had in the video, but a couple things: a tread depth gauge. The chicken, the chicken found a bug and she's chasing it. If you heard that, uh, but a tire t a tire tread depth gauge, and a tire pressure checker. Both of those are like what three bucks each, maybe. But yeah. Yeah, Andy, I totally agree. That is another great recommendation. Of course, a lot of you who have taken my classes before, my beginner's classes, um, I, I have those and sometimes I even give them out. Uh, so some of you are just like, oh yeah, I, I already got those from you, Faye, thanks. Um, but, that, but that is awesome. So thank you so much to everybody who took the time to respond and add their input. So I'm gonna add a few more links below and yeah, I hope this was helpful. Look how cute she is. Look at that face. Oh my gosh. Oh, someone was deep in the shop finding bugs or something. You are a mess. Okay, see you in my next video. Bye.